Good day grade 11s, welcome to this next lesson in Vectors in Two Dimensions. In this lesson we're going to be looking at another way that we can find um, the direction of a vector and that is using the parallelogram method or the resultant of a vector in two dimensions and that is the parallelogram method. But what is the parallelogram method? This is also known as the tail to tail method. Vectors are drawn tail to tail and then a the parallelogram is then completed and the resultant determined. Now it sounds very scary but let's do an example and then you'll see it's actually very easy. So it says a girl walks a hundred distance of 100 meters due east before turning and walking a distance of 50 meters in the direction of 60 degrees south of east. Determine her resultant displacement. Okay, so let's just draw what's happening here. And I remember grade 11s, I'm going to say this every time. When you draw this, you are going to be using a pencil, a ruler, and an eraser. So your drawings have to be a lot neater than my little rough drawings that I'm drawing here on the digital pen and pad. Okay, so I've drawn a little x north, south, east and west here just to get an idea of what exactly is going on. Okay, and let's draw what's happening. So I'm first going to change my color and I'm going to say, okay fine, the girl, girl walks a distance of a hundred meters due east. Okay, so she walks a hundred meters due east so that's 100 meters, right. Then it says she walks the direction of 60 degrees south of east. So let's draw another little axis here just to help us, right. You don't have to put the arrows on every time, it's just to give us an idea of where we're at. And let's just change the color, let's change it to green. And it says she walks a distance of 50 meters in the direction of 60 degrees south. Now, if we were doing if we were doing the triangle method, what I would do now is I would do what I'm going to show you, which is I'd go, I'd go head to tail and then I'd go, oh look, she's gone 60 degrees south of east and then she's gone down like that. And that is her 50 meters and there is her resultant. But now, that is what you're used to seeing. That's the triangle method. Now we are looking at the parallelogram method. And what did the parallelogram method say? It said tail to tail. So now, let's start again and draw tail to tail. So, north, south, west, east. And it says we need to draw 100 meters due east. So she goes 100 meters due east, right, but then she also travels 50 meters at an angle of 60 degrees south of east. So 60 degrees south of east is about here and she does that, 50 meters. So do you notice now that that is tail to tail, okay, and remember that is what we said the parallelogram was. And then what did it say? If we go back it says we draw the vectors tail to tail and then the parallelogram is completed and the resultant is determined. So we need to do that. So we need to complete this parallelogram. So what do we know that's special about a parallelogram? We know that a parallelogram, both sides of the opposite sides are parallel and equal. So what I need to do is I need to draw a line at the end of this vector which is parallel and equal to this. In fact, I'm going to change it back to green and we're going to go, okay, fine, let's draw that. We know that this angle here is 60 degrees. That means if I extended this, I could take a line down at an angle of 60 degrees and I could draw another line that is parallel and equal to this and I would get that. Then what do we do? We need to finish this parallelogram by drawing a line that is parallel and equal in length of this. So basically I'm going to join these dots. Okay. And there is our parallelogram. And then it says, what did it say? It says, and then the resultant is determined. So now we need to work out where this girl ended up. So if we choose a nice bright color, do you agree she started here and she ended over here? So actually her resultant 
is from there to there and that is her resultant. So that is the way we draw it using the parallelogram method. Now if we want to work out what a resultant is we can do it in a very easy way. Okay we can either do it using measurement in other words we measure these out and we use a protractor to find out our angles or we can use some calculations. So if we think about this we know that this side here is 50. We know that this little angle here is 60 degrees, right? Which means, since this is on a straight line, that angle there is 120 degrees. Okay, so what do we have? We effectively have a triangle here where this side is 100 meters, this side is 50 meters, and that angle there is 120 degrees. And by now grade 11s, you should have been taught the cos rule, the cos rule. And the cos rule states that a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. 2bc cos a. And we use this whenever we have a triangle where we've got any triangle where we've got two sides and an enclosed angle and we want the third side then this is what we're going to use. So if you look at it, if we change this with the colors to show you what I want, r squared right, is going to equal our 100 meter squared, our b squared, it doesn't really matter what colors you're using, I mean what size you use which, which for b or c, and then there is c squared, okay, and then it's minus 2 times B, which is red, times C, which is green, and then it's cos of A, which is the angle opposite the resultant, so therefore it's going to be this cool blue. Okay in this case cos A which is going to be cos R just to explain that to you. So if I put the numbers in and I'm not going to keep the colors because that's going to be mad the B squared is the red so it's going to be a hundred squared plus the C squared is going to be 50 squared minus 2 times by B which is a hundred times by C which is 50 times by cos of this angle here which is 120. So now we need to get our calculator out and do the sum. So let's have a look. It's going to be 100 squared plus 50 squared minus bracket 2 times 100 times 50 times cos of 120 and remember you have to get this in degrees and you close your bracket and you say equals and that's 17,500 but that is r squared so what do we have to do we have to square root our answer so we say shift square root of 17,500 and we end up with 132.29 so we end up with 132.29 meters. So that is our resultant. But have we finished? No, we have not because they also want, what is this? This is displacement. So this therefore is a vector. So what do we need? We need both the magnitude and we need the direction. And at the moment I've given the magnitude but I haven't given the direction. So if we think about it, do we agree that that's 90 degrees? So all we need to do is work out that little angle there in that triangle and then we will know how much to add to 90 to get the direction of the R. So if we look at this triangle and I'm going to draw it again here so you can see it. We've got this here which is 100, we've got this here which is 50, 
we know that that angle there is 120. We know that that there, let me just put the arrows in, is 132 point, no, yes, 0.29. And we want this, actually we want, yeah, we want this little angle there. So if we look at that, do you realize that we can use the sine rule? We know that sine A over A equals sine B over B. And we can use that when we've got sides and we want angles or when we've got angles and we want sides. So I can say I want this angle here. So that means that the opposite side is 50. So I can say sine A over 50 is equal to the only other angle we have is this one. So it has to be sine 120 over the opposite side to that which is 132.29. Therefore sine A is going to be sine 120 multiplied by the 50 from the side all over 132.29. So I again get my calculator out and I clear it. Okay. And we do this on our calculator. So we're going to go 50 times sine of 120 equals divided by 132.29. And that gives me 0 0.33, right? But that is sine A. So what do I have to do? I have to do second function sine of 0 0.33. So I go shift sine of 0.33 equals and it's 19.27 degrees. So this A is 19.27 degrees. So we're talking about this little angle here is 19.27 degrees. So now we could either say the resultant is going to be 132.29 meters at, at 19.27 degrees south of east or we could say that it's on a bearing of 90 we could add our 90 to that and we get 279109 or we could say it's on a bearing of 109.27 degrees Right, grade 11, so that's how you use the parallelogram method and I want you to go and practice these a lot. Please notice that most of this, once you've got your triangle, is maths and this is why we always say you need to be able to do maths in order to be able to do science properly, especially the physics sections. So please go practice, practice, practice. And that's all grade 11s for this lesson. Have a great day.